What's up everybody? I remember when I moved out of my apartment and into my first house, I realized there was a lot about living in a house that I didn't know. And I feel like that statement may apply to many of our tenants, which is why I want to make this video. The longer I lived in my house and had issues arise, the more I learned about my house and how things worked. That knowledge helped me to solve a lot of problems quickly and without needing to pay a vendor. I wanted to share some of that knowledge because it may help prevent issues down the road if you know what to do or not to do with certain items in the house. And if you understand how something works, you can troubleshoot it. Best case scenario, the problem is solved. Worst case, it provides us valuable information that can help the vendors diagnose and ultimately resolve your issue quicker. In this video, I'm going to discuss plumbing, toilet, and septic topics. I'm also going to cover electrical breakers and water softeners. So let's dive in. First, I want to discuss interior plumbing, specifically the toilet, sinks, and garbage disposals. I'm going to discuss the do's and don'ts, and then talk about function and troubleshooting. The toilet is pretty straightforward in how it functions. Water fills up the bowl. When you hit the, the lever, it opens the flapper valve, which drains water from the tank back into the bowl. As water refills the tank, the valve will rise to a certain level, at which point it will kill the water running in from the main line outside. Some common issues is that the water may keep running from the outside. And what may cause that is the flapper valve may not be closed all the way. You may have an issue with the handle or the uh, float valve may not be functioning properly. If your toilet ever overflows or has a leak, that's the main valve to shut off the water. Turn that valve off first and then diagnose the problem. There are certain items or liquids that you do not want to flush or put down the toilet, but what are they? Do not flush cat litter, dental floss, baby or wet wipes, feminine products, condoms, food, fats and oils, gum, plastics, cotton swabs, or pills. If your sink is equipped with garbage disposal, it's important to make sure there's cold running water while utilizing it. In addition to the items you cannot flush, there are also substances you do not want to put down the sink, such as egg or shrimp shells, coffee grounds, grease, oil, rice, chicken bones, banana or potato peels, meat, fiber or starchy rich vegetables, and nuts or seeds. It's important to remember that certain foreign items can lead to clogs in the plumbing, which can lead to the sink or toilet backing up and overflowing, and nobody wants that. And for those living in houses with septic instead of sewer, there are a few items to note. Make sure any chemicals used in the sink or toilet are septic safe. Do not pour cooking oil or grease down the sink. Spread out laundry loads and showers if possible and no bleach, ammonia, or phosphate chemicals. Next, I want to talk about electrical breakers. The electrical breaker panel or box is an important piece of the electrical system as it controls the flow of electricity. If there's too much electrical current, it will trip the breaker and you'll lose power to that zone. Most panels are located in low traffic areas, and in Florida, that is usually the garage, as is the case with mine. So here's my electrical panel. Most of them should be labeled with the zones. Just correspond the number and it'll tell you what zone it is. As you can see, all these breakers are on. Um, it's pretty easy to tell if you look real close, you can see on off. With Thanksgiving coming up, let's use a hypothetical example. Maybe we've got a bunch of appliances plugged in in the kitchen and all of a sudden they all stop working. Maybe you just plug something in. Let's go check the breaker and see what we find. So I'd come here and find kitchen. I'd come up here and I would notice, oh, okay, the breaker did trip. All I'd have to do is turn that back on and it should be in good shape. But if this actually happened in real life, I would wanna unplug that last appliance or whatever I plugged into that outlet first because that's obviously what caused it to trip and maybe look for somewhere else to plug that in. Um, why is this information important? Maybe down the road you own your own home. You want to know what controls what electrical zone in the house in case you're doing any kind of maintenance, changing electrical outlets or light switches or anything of that nature. You got to figure out where exactly what zone controls that uh, electrical supply because you don't want to be working on um, outlets or anything electrical if it's still wired hot and turned on. If your house is equipped with a water softener, you will want to make sure that the brine tank has sufficient salt. The water softener removes calcium and magnesium ions and replaces them with sodium ions. The first step is to find where the brine tank is, and in my case, it's on the left side of my house. The next step is to open the lid and check for salt. 
there's salt present but no water like you see here system is fine it's that simple Newer systems make it even easier when they have a digital indicator indicating that your salt levels are low. Mine does not, but as you can see, there's no standing water and there's sufficient salt. And attached to my system is the main water valve to cut off water to the entire house. If you ever have an issue with water running to the house and you're not exactly sure, run outside, flip that valve off, and it'll cut off the water to the entire house. My hope is you were able to pick up at least one piece of useful information from this video. And at some point in the future, you will own your own home. And you can apply this knowledge to saving yourself money by doing your own diagnostic and repairs. Remember, if you have any maintenance issues or need assistance, submit a work order through your tenant portal. Or for after-hour emergencies, call 407-584-7186. And if there are any topics that interest you or you'd like to see us do a video on, email me at chris at and I'll get it taken care of for you. Have a great day.